just be. The factor in the world. <laughs> Some days it works great, some days it doesn't. All right, well, we are live. Don't have anybody on yet, but uh, the video is being recorded, so of course we can view it afterwards. So why don't you go ahead and, and introduce yourself? Hopefully the, uh, the live stream doesn't die again. Yes, uh, so again, being out in the middle of the woods, we are at the mercy of whatever signal we can get. So we're going to do this as long as we can, as best as we can, and we're just going to roll with it. So my name is Jess Grill. I am the education coordinator at White Spog Preservation Trust here in Browns Mills in historic White Spog Village. And I run the Pinelands Institute here, which is our kind of environmental education outpost. Uh, we're standing here by our general store, which is the center of the village as it is right now. So White Spog Village is a 160 year old farming village, started off as cranberry farming. And then in the early 1900s, it is the birthplace of the commercial high bush blueberry crop. And we do still have family from the White family who started White Spogs farming our grounds today. And uh, we are also now a part of Brendan T. Byrne State Forest. The lands were uh, given over to the state of New Jersey in the 1970s. So we have three. Because they weren't good for anything else, right? That's pretty much the story, right? I mean, they couldn't find a commercial use for it. <laughs> <laughs> so we, fun fact, the greater grounds, the 3,000 acres of White Spog is owned by the state of New Jersey as part of Brendan T. Byrne State Forest. And the family, the fifth generation family of the Whites actually leased the land back from the state to continue cranberry farming. Oh, that's cool. So the fifth generation family is still farming here. They just don't own the land anymore. Got it. So everybody, um, by the way, Mark Harrison already says, hi, I'm here. Hi, Jess. Yes. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera around just so people can see me for a second. Hi, everybody. This is uh, Aaron Stoller with Stockton University. I'll do that just so you can see my beard. Um, <laughs> I'm going to try to uh, manipulate the camera here. I know that with masks and everything, it, uh, it it can be difficult to hear. But so, yeah, I'm here. And I, I, have, I, I will be prompting with questions since I know nothing about um, this area, and I'm relatively new to the Pine Barrens, but I'm Aaron Stoller. I'm assistant professor at Stockton University doing this. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh I think Sometimes. our battery dropped. Sometimes that happens when we lose signal. Oh, it's okay. Oh, I'm here. I got you. All right. So, yeah, uh, assistant professor is environmental science at Stockton University. Um, and I can attest to the fact that we passed multiple, uh, what look like cranberry bogs and blueberry farms on the way out here. So, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get hiking. All right. Yeah. Oh. I'm just, let's just take this out. All right. Oh, hold on. Technical difficulties. Oh, man. There we go. All right. There you go. Yeah. That I'm going to just gonna go put this down and not look Okay. So, hi. Excellent. Jennifer Norris says hi. Hi, Jen. For all of you that are on the stream, if you can just give a shout out, tell us your name, where you're coming in from. We'd love to hear from you. Um, and, uh, yeah, don't forget to like, uh, and follow both the Pinelands Institute page as well as the Stockton, uh, Natural Sciences page. Uh, we're both co-hosts on this, so you can follow future updates. So let's go for a hike and I'll, um, and I'll ask Jess to tell us a little bit about the history of the Pinelands Institute because I don't know it. All right, let's go. Yeah, Where are we going? So let's head this way. This leads out to this our way. wetlands. All right, so sorry for the jumpy camera. I thought we were going to have a gimbal, but I think it just failed on us. Um, so if you can just tell us a little bit about the history of the Pinelands Institute. Uh, so the Pinelands Institute has a very long history. It started in the 80s as the Conservation Education Center. Go. Oh, okay. Uh, through Glassboro State College, which is now Rowan University. Uh, in the 2000s, it was transferred to be a program of Burlington County College, which is now Rowan College at Burlington County. And actually, only just as of this year was it transferred to be a part of White Spog Preservation Trust. It has been here at White Spog since its inception. So it only made sense for the program to eventually make it as part of White Spog itself. Okay. So we're passing some of our village buildings here. Uh, you'll see there's a boarding house 
for single workers when they would come and work the farm. That little small shed was a paymaster shed where people, uh, after they spent the day picking, would go and collect their pay. Per, per bushel of blueberry? Or uh, per quart? Usually per peck. Per peck. Per yes. peck. Per a peck, peck of blueberries. Yes. So uh, usually you picked by the peck and you were paid by the peck. Um, it was usually done by volume instead of by weight. Uh, this building we're passing here was the superintendent's house. And then this house was built a little later. The Darlington house. Yes, yeah, so the Darlingtons are the current incarnation of the family of White. They were J.J. White's nephew who built a house here. Fun fact, the Darlingtons never lived in that house, though. The Whites of famous White's Bog fame. Yes. The, Dar the Darlingtons never lived there, you said? They never the lived there. Oh, okay. But they built the house, so we name it after them. Uh, so... Carol says, by the way, how to hear from Bergen County. I'm in the middle of writing a book that takes place in the Pine Barren, so thanks for this. By the way, Carol, if you're interested, uh, there's a great book by someone named Barbara Kingsolver that I'm in the middle of reading right now. Um, she's a great uh, writer uh, slash biologist that uh, I can't remember what the book's title is off the top of my head. Look it up. It's her, it's her latest book, but it takes place in the Pine Barrens, and it's uh, all about uh, Vineland. Uh, Have you read so, it? Fun fact, I actually read it, uh, my, one of uh, my co-workers, our archivist, Kiyomi, let me borrow the book. What's it called? I you don't remember either. I forgot right off the top my, I think it's Unsolved. Oh yeah, that might be it. Check out the pond. Man, this is going to be wood frog habitat. We have lots of wood frogs here. Um, earlier today I heard a lot of southern tree frogs. We don't get too many pine barren tree frogs in this wood specifically. But if you go down south a little more, there's tons in uh, Wharton State Forest and Bass River, a lot in the Hamilton Yeah, area. we actually just did a survey on Stockton's campus. We have at least, I think it's three different breeding locations that we know of now for pine barren tree frogs. That's fantastic. Which, if you don't know, is a very um, iconic species that's only found in pine barrens ecosystems. It's one of the only species that can tolerate the acidic conditions of pine barrens wetlands. What's really interesting is a lot of the pine barren specific uh, organisms that have evolved to be able to thrive in this very harsh environment, they're all only about 10 to 12,000 years old, which when you think about the history of evolution, it's very young. And one of our youngest species, the Atlantic leopard frog, was only identified, I believe it was 2014. So we have a fairly young, uh, fairly new species that has just been... Wait, wait, wait. Are you talking about the, the one that was discovered in New York City? No, the Atlantic leopard frog was down south here. In, oh, I'm uh, thinking south of a wood Jersey. frog species. Oh, no, no, no. Leopard oh, I'm sorry. Frog. My friend Jeremy's going to kill me. <laughs> He's the one that... that okay, okay, leopard frog. Um, but I just want to hop back real quick to the book. Hop we're talking back because of <laughs> frogs. Get it. Um, so You're going to have to put up with corny jokes from me. You know what? All I'm a dad without being a dad. All ecologists like bad punny jokes. Yeah. But, um. That's how we stay sane. Back, I, hopping back to the book. Back, White Bog Preservation Trust, we have a book club. And that is the book that we are just starting for our book club. So it's Carol like, said it's called Unsheltered. Unsheltered, that's what it is. Thanks, ah, Carol. Thank you. Yeah, it's quite a great book. I actually, I, I, I'm a huge fan of Barbara Kingsolver. Any of her other novels are fantastic. It's really, she only writes about like natural, natural stuff. There's a lot of natural history, a lot of New Jersey history too. So tell us about some of the plants that we're looking to see. Uh, I guess it's laurel, bayberry, and... Yeah, we got some laurels, we got some bayberries, and our claims to fame here are our blueberries. Gonna, we got some bayberries here, we got... I'm going to eat it. <laughs> So when you are eating wild fruits, make sure you know what you're picking. Make sure you know what you're eating. Yeah, don't don't pick stuff that you don't know. That's a blueberry. This is a blueberry right here. I'm not seeing any plants on it, but you can actually see the difference between a bayberry with its blue berries and a blueberry plant. You can, can you eat bayberry? 
You can. I haven't, personally. Am I going to die if I put it in my mouth? So, fun fact, everything is edible at least once. You should only ever That's eat not things. a fun fact. You should only ever eat things you know are safe for you to eat. Well, you just told me that it's safe, so I blame you if I die. It tastes like a blueberry. So we have blueberries all over the place here. Blueberries are uh, native fruit to New Jersey. Uh, North America doesn't have too many fruits that are native only to North America. Uh, the American cranberry is one of them, and your high bush blueberry is another one. Uh, they're also in the same family. They're both vaccinians. They are both found all over the Pine Barrens. They thrive. Yeah, it's like Pacific weeds. Soil. Seriously, it's like, and as soon as you burn a forest, or as soon as a forest naturally burns, it's like the first thing that comes back. It's amazing. And if anybody out there wants to brew some blueberry wine, shoot me a private message. I'll give you a great recipe. <laughs> but you have to beat the birds to the blueberries because they will fight you. The birds and the Beak deer. and claw for it. Birds and deer. Um... Let's see, other plants that are fairly common around here. We have our cat briar. Cat briar, that's a new one for me. Oh, it's just a common green briar called cat briar here. Um, also edible. The young, bright the leaves. green leaves are edible, not the older leaves, only the young ones. Give me one that I can eat. Uh, these are a little older since they've been growing. I go. love putting, like, plants in my mouth. That's how I met my wife. I was like, hey, I can eat this. Um, another okay, this is the leaf. I don't recommend doing this. I'm a trained ecologist, which means that I'm stupid. It's just a part of science. Yeah, you got to stick stuff it's in your mouth. actually a great, great meme about science. It, uh, is, Oops. Do you lick it? Uh, I lick it. <laughs> this doesn't taste very good. I'm putting it down. Okay. Another edible plant is sassafras. Yeah, I know sassafras. Yeah. Yeah. Although, that was found to have a carcinogen in it. It was, so... Yeah, so if you ever find a plant that looks like this... You got your uh, mittens. Yeah, your mittens. The leaves actually don't necessarily have mittens. You gotta do so. You gotta rip out the, the plant mm -hmm. from the root, and you gotta smell the root. You can actually chop up the root and make sassafras tea, although don't drink too much of it, because it's got that saffron in it, which is, I guess, a carcinogen. It has been... Yeah. Fairly new, newly known to science in the grand history. I don't of recommend science. eating that leaf. That was not a good taste. Not anything <clears throat> tastes good, but if you're ever stuck in the woods and you need to eat something. God. Well, if blueberries. We find, if we find some wine berries or some blueberries. So this is beautiful. So welcome to the entrance to our wetland area. Oh man, I didn't know this existed. Yeah. I ain't never been back here. So actually, we'll take a. Quick turn to the right here. Cool. In New Jersey, uh, we have the strictest rules for cranberry farming. For every they have to be cranberries. For every acre of cranberries you grow, you need to have nine acres of pristine water. For every acre, you have to have nine acres of pristine water. What does pristine water mean? Uh, pristine water means that it is reserved for agricultural use. Um, People don't swim in it. People, uh, you don't have agricultural runoff, and you try not to have too much vehicle traffic. Looks like we have the old cranberry drainages here. Yep. In the water. Please don't do that. <laughs> you got some. Uh, actually, if you look closely, you got some diving beetles. Yep. Some little whirly gigs. Yep. Diving beetles. This is beautiful. So this is so none of this is used for cranberry farming anymore. Yes, oh, this is. This is our All cranberry right. farm. So you guys actually do farm cranberry. Yeah. Do you participate? Do you get into the muck boots? Uh so not in the in not in these bogs. We do have a dry bog that we use for education. And all a dry bog is is one that is not flooded for a wet harvest. It's okay. only a dry harvest. Uh, so if we want, you can yeah, see let's, the Yeah, let's, 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 go, let's go look at the cranberries. When, when is cranberry harvest? Uh, Mid-September to end of October. Oh, man, look You're at here. all of them. They're all right here. So these berries were flowers just about a month and a half ago. Uh, I could actually see some. Don't eat these yet. They're gross. <laughs> 
You can see some that didn't fully form yet. I mean, they're not going to kill you, but they're not very tasty. They're not very tasty. I mean, they're very sour anyway. Uh, most of your fruits in, that grow in the pine barren soil is very acidic, be very sour because the soil and the water and essentially everything out here in the pine barrens is a very acidic, nutrient poor uh, environment. Right. So citrus. Wait, I have to do this. I have to do this. Are you going to do a pan? I have to do this. Do you see this, Simba? <laughs> All this that you see will be yours someday. No, okay. Okay, I'm done. All right. Love it. One of my favorite facts is next year's flowers are already on this plant. Next year's flowers are already on this. Yep. What? So if we look really closely, if you come in here, you'll actually see a flower bud. There's a piece of grass in there. Oh, uh, let's move the grass out of the way. Wait, so how does this survive the winter? Uh, they flood the bogs and it will rest dormant under the water. Oh, cool. Yeah, okay. so they essentially hibernate underwater for the winter. Cool. Uh, they have an 18 month growing So those season. little red things. Uh, so not these. Oh, these are actually flowers not those. Th that flowered. Oh, this the things at the, ape at the tip. Yep, at the oh, okay. very, very tip. Yep, okay. Cool. Oh, I'm old. Oh, God. Oh, God. Standing up. Standing up. It's tough. Gotta get out more. Oh, I do get out. <laughs> but when you chop firewood. Yeah, that is tiring. You feel tired all day long. So, okay, so we have one acre, uh, or we have at least one acre of cranberry bog to nine acres of, of water. Of water. And the water can be used for flooding the cranberry bog, yes? Yes. Uh, so they used to use uh, the, the little wooden thing we walked past. Okay. That is a traditional floodgate. They okay. They would pull uh, planks of wood out of it to let water in. And what do they do now? Pump houses. Pump houses. Is that just a more efficient method? Much more efficient okay. method of moving. And I guess there's a there's a set volume that they can drain. Um, they can't. I guess they can't fully drain it. Uh, they this this will actually get fairly low. Okay, but uh, not too low because then you'll kill all the fish. Sure. So there are some spots where it's a little deeper, and there are wetlands that, or there are ponds out here that they will not drain. Okay. The other thing is to help with conservation of water. They will move the water from one bog to another, to another, to another. So okay. they don't flood all of the bogs all at the same time. Okay. I'm sure that helps with shore birds and everything. And Absolutely. Man, how deep is this water over here? It's not hip deep. Hip it's not deep. very deep at all. Well, on you, hip deep is... Oh, yeah. Hip deep on me is... <laughs> <laughs> I am short. We use measurements all the time. When I was talking about maple tapping last week, I was talking about diameter of the tree at breast height, and I realized that's going to be very different for different people. By the way, for those of you that are just joining on, thank you for having us. If you have been watching Jessica's um, live streams, of course you know this. If you've been watching my live streams, you know who I am. I'm Aaron Stoller from, from Stockton University. We are here out at White's Bog Village, um, historic village uh, in the middle... Uh, Brand Browns Mills and the Pine Barrens. Feel free to ask any questions that you want. We are just going for a nice little hike. And let me know how the audio is. We're trying to talk through masks. If there's anything I can do to improve the audio, if there's anything that you want to see, if there's any questions that you have, just chime on in. If you're just watching this for a joyride, by all means. And we have a beautiful dog coming up. Hi, Hello. Hi, you're guys. on a live stream broadcast of the world. I love your mask. Oh, that's that's so an good. Elsa mask. <laughs> You know, and I'm actually really upset because I ordered a mask for that I wish came for today. It is axolotl fabric. If like you don't know what fabric it, made from an axolotl skin, you eco terrorist. So thin. I don't know. Well, I, I wouldn't get cancer. No, I'm assuming anyway. that there's axolotls on it. Axolotls on the fabric, which they are my. Fa you know, you work in environmental. In the environmental field, when you have a favorite of every type of animal... Well, axolotls are just adorable. They're just great. Fun fact, axolotls are almost extinct in the natural environment. Great job, humans. But also, fun fact, they're thriving in a laboratory environment, and they all come from a strain that we imported from France. I did not know that. I know that they... Come at me, car. <laughs> 
I know that their natural environment is in one lake in Mexico. Yep, one lake in Mexico, and we're killing it. Although they're trying to conserve it now, but, you know, who knows. <laughs> and they look very different from the lab species. Very different. Even the, uh, even the wild type, which you can get in the pet trade or scientific you trade. Can? Even I didn't know they, can. they are illegal in New Jersey, though. You cannot own one as a pet in New Jersey. That doesn't stop people. No, not always. Oh, actually, I want to show you a pretty flower because we packed a few I of like them flowers. Now. I like flowers. This is a Virginia Meadow Beauty. A Virginia Meadow Beauty. And they're just like a nice wild oh, flower. That is really pretty, actually. I mean, it's it. The name sets it up for being yeah. pretty, but uh, you do have to be careful because the they are thorny. If you're not feeling it, they have like the raspberries here. Wineberry. 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 These are edible. Not yet, though. They're not ready yet. Carol says, "Wow, my adult kid has axolotl pets." Oh <laughs> uh, well, whatever. We won't tell anybody, we Carol. It's okay. Anything. It's okay. Don't worry about it. You ain't the only one. So the Pine Barrens is famous for our wild flowers. We have a huge variety of wild flowers, some of which you can't find anywhere else in the world. Maybe some of the other Pine Barrens. Uh, the New Jersey Pine Barrens is one of the largest in the U.S. that's left. The other two that are comparable in size are in Long Island, the Long Island Pine Barrens. And North Carolina. And North Carolina. North Carolina, right. What's Carol says in Boston? I don't oh. think so. Oh, the, the, oh, the, the there is there. <laughs> oh, 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 it's in Boston. Maybe I was gonna say there. I think there is a pint, like a small little remnant somewhere in Massachusetts. It's possible. Oh no, there is, there is, there. Oh no, I'm thinking about Long Island. <laughs> there is one up in upstate New York because I lived around Troy for a little bit. There used to be these pine forests all over the place. Okay. Uh, we are on a. Oh, it's from the Wisconsin glacier that receded at the end of the last ice age. So, a couple hundred thousand years ago. Okay, Dirk McGurk. Now, I don't know who this is, but I love your name, Dirk. All right. <laughs> uh, it's probably not your real name. I might steal it. How could you tell that they were wine berries as opposed to blackberries or raspberries? Um... I have been collecting berries out here for quite a while, so I've just learned it, but it's also when you look at them. So with wine berries, the berry is actually a pretty small, compact berry. There we go, it's starting to turn dark. And the leaves... God, green heads. Oh, green heads. Oh, green heads. Yep. This is why we put on bug spray. And the leaves, they're serrated, but they're not serrated sharp like or a knife. thorny. So they got these little serrations mm -hmm, on the end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and the vine has very small thorns. Blackberry, which there's some blackberry a little further up. I can show you okay. when we get there. Uh, the leaves have thorns. The vines have very large thorns. Uh, the leaves are also much larger. Okay. And they're also darker. Okay. Uh, the berries are also a little bit bigger as well. Cool. Uh, I learned so much. Oh, old. Um, Bruce asks, are you going to walk back to Rome? Um, Rome is a little far away. Rome requires a boat. Unless we're talking about a different Rome. We're talking about a completely different Rome. Okay. Um, you can walk up towards Rome. Okay. So, Aaron, you wouldn't know this, but when Whitesbog was a fully active farming village, uh, there were two satellite villages for the workers to live at. One was called Florence and one was called Rome. Mostly because these workers were Italian immigrants that came in from Philly. So the towns were named Rome and Florence to make it seem a little more homey, a little more familiar. Because if you're coming from Italy and then Philadelphia, the Pine Barrens are nowhere near what you're used to seeing. Uh, so Rome is actually up this way. Oh, okay. Rome as a village does not exist anymore. Bruce told you that before you told you that. <laughs> so. Dirk says that the wine berries he was collecting in south, southeast Pennsylvania looked a bit different, less brilliant red color. Um, a lot of that is going to depend on how much sun they get. Yeah. Um, and how much nutrients are in the ground. So don't use the coloration necessarily as a. 
Yeah, we, the Pine Barrens are notorious for having very nutrient poor soil. If you're looking at the ground, you'll see it's sand. That is 90% of our soil here. There might be some clays, there might be some silts, usually much further down, uh, but most of our surface sand here are quartz and silica sands. It's good for making glass. It is. We actually have, there are all sorts of these little farming towns around New Jersey, one of which, uh, Wheaton, is still used for glass blowing today. If, oh, oh, I think that's a turtle head. Do you see right by that small lily? Oh, flower? yeah, we got a little turtle. It's probably a painted turtle. Let's see if I can sneak up. Good luck. It's not a turtle, is it? No. Oh. No, it's not a turtle. I thought it looks like a it's turtle a root. head. It's a very sneaky root. Oh, it looks like a turtle head. We were both. We were both. Am I wrong? No, you're. It's. I don't know. Oh, I scared something. It's just yeah. a root. Yeah. Oh, man. It looked like a turtle head. Um. I actually did not make the connection between Wheaton and the glass that I use in my laboratory. Anyways, um, the people driving on these trails, uh, is that, um, what are they doing? Uh, they're out for a drive. Okay, uh, so that's allowed. Are, yeah, so in this area, you can see that these roads, they're historically used for uh, outdoor recreation more recently, but historically just for farms. And we do have vehicles come out here as long as they stay on the roads. They are allowed out. Um, Susan Levy That's my mom. says, hi, sweetie. So I'm assuming she's not talking to me. No. Hi, I mean. mom. <laughs> and um, someone else, Carol asks, could you raise enough food there to be self-sufficient? Um, that really depends on what you want to eat. So, uh, yeah, that is true. We do. It, we actually have some great hunting out here in the Pine Barrens. If yeah, you yeah. You could definitely hunt. Definitely hunt. There's plenty of deer. Plenty of deer, plenty of turkey. We have, well, yeah, we're overrun in deer and turkey. I mean, if you amend the ground with stuff, so you can produce. The What's really interesting is here in the Pine Barrens, you, amending is like adding nutrients into the soil. Usually you do that to help bring soils back to life. If you amend soil in the Pine Barrens with like a nutrient dead soil, you're actually degrading the soil here. Oh, okay. It's considered degrading the Pine Barren soil. Don't do it, folks. Don't do it. Um, I know we were talking about fungus. Yeah, somebody was looking for fungus. Don't eat this one. Don't eat this one. Um, I know you said you're not good at fungus. I am not good at fungus. However, I have my iPad and I use this great app called Seek. And what it is, is you can hold it up to anything. Actually, I'll hold it up to this little oak right here. Can you hold it up to me? I don't know. But what <laughs> it'll do is it'll tell you what it is down to genus. And if you're lucky, you'll get to species. So it's, it's for plants. Plants, animals, insects, fungus, uh, anything. That's cool. So. Oh, wow. This is really specific. If you head over to here, all your species. Oh, it needs internet to generate nearby species. But anyway, it can check. So wait, what is it saying this thing is? So you can take photos without internet. Oh, okay. So and then you will upload it, it later. it will tell me. Well, it's telling me this is a, it is an. Russell. Russellaceae family. That's the family. We don't know what the mushroom is. I don't know if we'll get down to genus or species with the app. That's cool. But I use, um, I use iNaturalist and plant app. It's linked it. to iNaturalist. Oh, it that's is, cool. It is an app by iNaturalist to help you with identification. So if you have an iNaturalist account, you can add it to your observations. There you go, folks. Yeah, we were just talking about iNaturalist when we were doing, uh, I was with the Margate Diamondback Terrapin Conservation Project oh, uh, a couple weeks ago. And um, we were talking about how they use iNaturalist to upload locations, specific GPS locations of where they find all their turtles. It is a wonderful, wonderful app. Yeah, it's in the, the mode of what we call citizen science, yeah. where um, 
we now realize that scientists are pretty stupid. I mean, I'm a scientist, so, you know, it's kind of self-admitting that we can't possibly get all the data that we need to understand the world. And it's like everybody in the world kind of wants to collect their own data, so why not help us? Yep. And it essentially introduces you to the work that scientists will do out in the field. Now, not all of the data that you can find on iNaturalist is what we would call research grade. Yeah. But there are, it is Meaning possible. that there's misidentifications. But it is possible. It's, it's a great community so people can come together and discuss what they're finding. Right. Susan Parker asks, what are the blue holes in the Pine Barrens? Now, I don't know what she's talking about. I'm going to take a guess that they're <laughs> quarries. Uh, blue holes are um, a very specific groundwater where they have high, high chemical con I don't know too much about them. I know some people specifically study them. I have not. I just know that they have very high chemical contents. Oh, before you walk too far. Well, everything has Rome. a high chemical content. Well, specifically, I believe it's like specifically coppers. But welcome, welcome to, to Rome. Rome. And the way we know we're in Rome is, well, there's a foundation. It's a log. Nope, that's a foundation. Oh, okay. So there was a worker's cottage That's a here. green head. Yeah. <laughs> so those were steps up into a building. A little further up on the other side, we actually see the foundation of another building. We just have to walk up. It's hidden by the trees right now. They probably can't hear you. We're looking for a foundation of another. It's hidden by trees, but it's in there. And this is Rome. Yeah. Okay, folks, I got to tell you, the actual Rome is way more interesting. <laughs> I mean, I haven't been there, but I've seen pictures. While we're looking for this, I will say, I think that the blue holes are kind of groundwater seeps. There's another building. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. So this is not a building, but it's a, it's a foundation it's for a building. It's a foundation, where a building was. Susan Parker asks, are there chiggers there? Probably. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to hate myself later on. Um, I actually sampled a blue hole. Oh, did you? Yeah, out in Hamilton. I had no idea what it was. We took ourselves on a weird hiatus. And it is one of the strangest freshwater systems out there. Like, I got to tell you, it is just crystal clear blue. How are the strawberry flies out there? I've never even heard of strawberry flies. I haven't either. Yeah, I don't know what strawberry flies are. Are you talking about greenheads? Because I know what greenheads are and I know what chiggers are. I wonder if they're another biting fly species. If someone wants to throw in some info about strawberry flies, I am Well, Rick, Rick Mulhern knows what strawberry flies are. So <laughs> if you can tell us what strawberry flies are, teach us. So we got this excellent little... God, you got to pave this. Yeah, this is difficult. This is difficult. I don't like. I don't well, like welcome sand. Welcome to the Pine Barrens. Welcome to oh, our sugar camp. I'm lazy and I'm fat and I'm out of shape. Well, this will get you in shape. No, it's not. It's just gonna make me tired. So, if you wanna look for frogs, this is a great place. I like frogs. I don't see tadpoles. Uh, it's a little late in the season for tadpoles. If you come here in April, there are tadpoles everywhere. That. It's not a snake, no. but I thought it was. Guys, just so you know, I'm a frogologist by trade. That's easier than herpetologist because then people think I study herpes, and I don't study herpes. Do people honestly think that? I don't know. So if you ever want to come out here with your muck tape, it is great. I'm not hearing any. Oh, we got some wild cranberry, though. Ta-da! Something just hopped in there. Something did. I heard it. That's the thing about frogs, you'll usually hear them before you see them. Ah, uh, Glenn says blue holes were formed from clay mining. I thought they were like quarries. Ah, thanks, Glenn. Oh, Rick Mulhern says, I guess greenheads. <laughs> I don't know how strawberry flies translates to greenheads, but uh, sure. Well, then again, if we think about our species, well, the I mean, American species of uh, poisonous frogs, where you have your blue jean frog, it's also called a strawberry frog. And what did you call that purple flower? Be beautiful? Uh, the violet meadow beauty. Violet meadow beauty. Or Virginia meadow beauty. Virginia sorry. meadow beauty. 
And so this is well, this is short leaf pine, jack pine. I know we got short leaf jack and long leaf. And pitch pine. Which and pitch pine, right? And pitch pine. And this is pitch pine. So pitch pine. God, and I call myself an ecologist. Pitch pines are really obvious uh, from their very thick bark that tends to be kind of flaky. Why are you gonna insult it? It's it likes Don't being call thick. it thick. Hey, hey, hey! Thick is good. It is thick. You're being thickest. Another way you can tell it's a pitch pine is by looking at the vesicles. There the vesicles? Be, now um, you're insulting its vesicles? So the vesicles are the things that hold the needles, its leaves, and there will always be three needles per vesicle. Three. Flat on one side, rounded on the other, it looks like. Yep. Very astringent smelling. Dirk McGurk says the blue holes he thought was always sand mining since the Pine Barrens was mostly sand. Abandoned sand mines that fill in with groundwater springs, super dangerous to swim in. Yeah, you don't want to go in them. Oh, well, I went in them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I went in with waders. <laughs> Uh-oh, we lost somebody. Oh, no. Uh, May they rest in peace. I bet you somebody probably fell in the water and just and just abandoned. Leave their shoes. Which don't do that. Take yeah. your stuff home with yeah. you. Yeah, pack out. Got some wild grape going on there. Mm -hmm. That's cool. We got some heathers too. Got our pine. Do we have some Rachels. Ah, I get it. <laughs> oh. We'll head back out to the west. I know this tree. This is chestnut oak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, chestnut oak. Yeah. One of the few oaks that is multi loved. Oh, that's a big caterpillar. Huh. All right. How are you at Ento? Um, um, I don't know. Right now, I'm just trying to get a mask back on my face. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not. It's, it's a caterpillar. It That's a, as far as I got. I'm going to guess it's a butterfly species. Usually moth species are a little fuzzier. Hmm. Hey! See any chanterelle or black trumpet mushrooms? Not yet. Not yet. Those are... I, I can recognize chanterelles. I can recognize sorrels. I can, or not sorrels. Morels. Uh, turkey tail. We got some red maple. And what's the other one I can do? Uh, the hallucinogenic ones? No, we're lucky we'll find some bog iron. I've never seen bog iron. Ugh. God, it is humid out today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That rain's gonna come through. What was that? That rain's gonna come through, hopefully. Eventually. One person back on. Hey. Two people back on. Thanks for joining back. Three people back on. Welcome to the Pine Barrens, where, like we said, we are at the mercy of signal in the middle of the woods. That dastardly signal. Uh, Four people back on. It's incredibly humid, and there's very little, there's a lot of cloud cover, so we're not getting a whole bunch of satellite coverage here. So, uh, you know, bear with us. Six on. people back on. Welcome all. Thanks for joining back. So, did you have any other specific questions? No, I got them all before it cut out. That was that was pretty much it. Just kind of taking them as they went. If anybody does have any questions, of course, feel free to ask them. Um, so, how many visitors do you guys get per year? So that is a very hard number for us to really uh, say. When we have, when we were doing in-person events and our school field trips, uh, let's see, we would have about uh, school kids, 20,000. We can easily have 50,000 people in a year. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. And you guys don't charge any admission. We do not charge admission to come out and enjoy the grounds. Uh, we will charge admission for some of our events. Right. Okay. Unless you're a member. Oh. You become a member of the Weisbog Preservation Trust. We have some member-only events. Do I get a mug? Uh, you get, well, it depends on I only join things level. if I get a mug. Depends on the membership level. I think Okay, well, if you level. join at the $1,000 membership oh, level, you get, a mug. you get a mug. You get a mug and a t-shirt and... 
probably a private tour at that point. Oh, cool. Okay. Well, I don't have a thousand dollars. New memberships start at fifteen dollars. Oh man, only fifteen bucks. Only fifteen bucks. All right, all right. You can just come out whenever. So I guess if you live around here, that's a that's a pretty good thing. Or if you have a family in the Pine Barrens and come support preservation. Absolutely. Of both. Absolutely. In case you didn't know, Fish and Wildlife and other preser and other like conservation agencies are the least funded agency in the government. Like people think that we get a lot of money, ecology, environmental science. We don't. We we don't get any money. Yeah, we also have have the tightest. Uh, we're very understaffed. Uh, yeah. Very understaffed. Very underfunded. We please help us. Yeah. I think at some point we we demonstrated that we could get along with the shoestring budget, and that never changed. And yep. so, of course, we never get any more money. Um, we are very good at begging for money, which is in the form of grants, because that's essentially all a grant is. Yep. <laughs> Please give us money. Here's why we need it. Yep. Hopefully you get it from the other thousands of people asking for the same money. Yep. This but, is really pretty. I love it out here. This is really pretty. What a great place to come out. So glad that we could bring people out. By the way, um, if anybody, oh, we got, okay, happy to see it's not raining, and we got, do have some comments here. All right, cool. Um, if anybody has any questions or comments, please, please, please do uh, ask. Do you guys have any uh, maple trees in the forests? The, like, large maple trees? Mostly just the swamp maples, the red maples. Okay. Uh, we don't really get too many of the Oh, I thought swamps maybe. were a different species. Uh, Aether rubrum. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's... Kind of, that's the fun thing about common names. Well, no, I thought that it was that that species of maple that was like had a really large, large leaf. Not Norway. I know what Norway is. On. Yeah, the, the Norway ones, they're like as big as my head. Yeah. Uh, so around here, we actually have some blackberries. So the person who was asking the difference, once we turn the corner... We're hunting for blackberries. Man, it's humid out. It really is. To all those people, oh, there's some blackberries are dried, bro. Um, to all those people that say that you can't breathe while wearing a mask, guys, it's, I can breathe. It's oh, right. I'm not happy about it, but I can breathe. Yeah, so these are the blackberries. Oh, Ooh, don't fall. You yep. can see that they have died in the heat. Yep, they're shriveled up. Yep, so these are the blackberries. There's usually a giant green frog hanging out down there, but I don't see him. Uh, I don't know. No. It is an interesting... Oh, it's an interesting vine. Yeah, yeah. It's just on top of everything. I don't know. So what's the acidity? What's the acidity of this water? Do you know? Uh, it's usually around a 4.5 to a uh, 5.5. That's pretty acidic. Great. Yeah. Go, so... go, go. Something red tail. Oh, bye. That's my husband. Oh. She says hi. hi. <laughs> what what is that name? Goyakle. Goyakle. Yeah, he's uh he's a patchy. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> um, but yeah. Why is your last name not Red Tail? That's way cooler than Grill. You know, I didn't want to go through the whole thing. I get it. You don't have to go through the whole thing. My wife didn't either. <laughs> In fact, she was like, "If you want to change your last name, you can go for it." And I was like, <laughs> "No, I'm good." So um. Yeah, so the soil, the water, everything around here has a pH of usually around a 4.5 to a 5.5. Which, if people don't know, is pretty acidic. Pretty acidic. That's kind of like your soda. Yeah, it's it's around vinegar. I believe yeah. acetic acid is around your 4.5 as well. And uh, we also have a very high iron content. Yeah, we're soil. hunting some bog iron. We're not going to find it around here. No, this has been turned over so much. Uh, fun fact, all cranberry bogs are uh, technically started as uh, bog iron bogs. And the cranberries just kind of started working their way in and farmers saw, hey, crop. Oh, we got a, what is that, a 12 band? That the, dragonfly. The, right the dragonfly? It's either a 3 band or a 12 band, depending on how many clear spots there are on the wing. Probably a 12 band. They're very common here. Do you have people here. that go kayaking in this? Um, not here, but a little further back, there's an area where people tend to go kayaking. Okay. Is it just not, it's not allowed in this area? 
Uh, no place to put in? Yeah, no good place to put in, but a little further back there's a spot where it's okay. more shallow, more sandy. That's cool. Uh, the hard thing about that is, is as much as we want people to recreate out here, because nature is for everyone. We want everyone out here. We also need everyone to understand that we need you to help us keep this clean. So if you are ever outside and you're going for a hike and you see trash or people dumping trash or leaving their trash, we all need help. Please remind them to take their trash with you or pick the trash up as you're hiking. So bring a plastic bag. Yeah. Although actually what I usually do is I just find a plastic bag that yeah. somebody dumped and then I start using that to carry the trash. That happens to Zach, I'm glad you know these. Uh, <laughs> does the acid help to free up the iron? Ooh, I am actually unsure about that. That is a fun question. I. Do you know? Am not a chemist. Not, neither. Your am husband, I. Mr. <laughs> Redtail, says you have to smelt it out of the soil. Red clay is the best, so not really. Yeah, well, we don't have clay here, so. I'm glad your other half knows. <laughs> yeah, we don't. We don't. Well, actually, there are some. A little. There are some spots, especially as you get further down in the aquifers. The I believe it's the Copansi aquifer. Okay. Which is about a mile down below. That's a little more of a clay soil. So if you don't know, down here in the Pine Barrens, we are actually standing on top of about a 17 trillion gallon aquifer, where if we were to take all that water and bring it to the surface, it would cover all of New Jersey in about five feet of water. Uh, it's called the Kirkwood Cohansi Aquifer. Uh, two different Soil That's types. one of the most pristine aquifers in the country. It is. It's well known for its water. And in fact, if you want to taste its water in beer form, go to my friends at the, um, uh, not Pylons Brewing. There's Pylons Brewing, there's Los Orange Brewery, there's... What's the name of the brewery? Uh, there are so many here in the Pine Barrens. Uh, it's right off of the parkway. Uh, Why can't I remember the name of it? It's not Icarus. No. Because I know Icarus growing. If somebody knows, it's <laughs> right off of like 39. Dang it. <laughs> oh, look at all the lotus blossoms or whatever we're going to call them. <laughs> They're lily flowers. Lily flowers. I'm a, I'm a scientist. The fun thing about being a scientist is you know a lot about a specific thing and everything else you just have general knowledge. Uh. The thing go. about being a scientist is I just say stuff that people believe me when I say I'm a scientist. Susan really Levy says, ask your brother. <laughs> My brother works for a brewery. Oh. Oh, fish. Yeah. Okay, so Lily. Lily blooms, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lily. This is not lotus. I know what lotus looks like. Yeah, this is not lotus. This is here. That's standard beautiful. Standard fragrant white lily, which is funny because there are also some pink ones out there. I uh, don't see any spe Oh, there's some. Hidden Sands Brewery. Oh, that's what I was thinking about. Oh, okay. It's called Hidden Sands because of the Kirkwood Clancy res Reservoir, which is a uh, sandy reservoir. Yeah, spatter Dock. Spatter Dock. That's my favorite dock. <laughs> Just another aquatic plant. And now the other one that you're going to get around here is going to be your bladder wart. Bladder warts, which I don't Which see is any. the carnivorous plant. It eats plankton. It's starting to rain. I see the droplets yeah, on see the water. The drop. It is also one of the fastest organisms in the world. Yeah. If you've never seen a bladder wart bladder, just look it up on YouTube. It's really cool. I teach my ecology class that. So this leads back to the village, but we can go this way and see some more cool stuff. Okay. Here's hoping the rain holds out. Yeah. I heard a green frog. The little uh, broken banjo. Nope. nope. Uh -uh. It kind of uh -uh. sounds like if you stretch a rubber band between your fingers and pluck it. There's the sassafras there again. You go. Say the mitten, but the, it doesn't ha always have to be a mitten. See, like you can have a young leaf, which doesn't even look like a mitten. So yeah, you can yeah. have a single leaf. You can have it with three lobes, and then a right. Oh, there's a right hand mitten. A right hand mitten. And a left hand mitten. Oh, the lefties. Ah, oh, those lefties. Those lefties. They say lefties are smarter, but I'm not a lefty, so I don't believe them. <laughs> 
healthy. If you're lucky out here, you'll find some beavers and some muskrat, which are our aquatic rodents. Some beavers. Yeah, we have we have a beaver uh, lodge up that way, not too far. Is that where they play cards at the beaver lodge? At the lodge. Yeah, that's where they have their meetings. You know. Beavers are good. Beavers are fantastic for your ecosystem. Don't kill the beavers. They're also extremely soft. Extremely what? Soft. Oh. But don't don't go don't petting go a beaver. Them. If you're lucky enough to be able to work with in with wildlife. What's the grass that's sticking out? Uh, it's probably common reed. No, common reed's phragmites. Oh, that's yeah. the name. No, that's not that's it's, not common reed. Yeah, it's a common reed. Is stilt grass or no? Grasses are a blind not difficult. spot for me. Elizabeth A. Hensel says, football, mitten, and ghost. Love sassafras. <laughs> I've never heard it called a ghost, but I yeah, see I've it. Never... I like that. I like that one. And I got some see, uh, some reeds out there, some sedges. Sedges have edges. Reeds are round. Reeds are round. No, thrushes, thrushes are... Rushes, rushes are round, sedges have edges, and grasses have asses. <laughs> we did, uh, because I work with children. Oh yeah, don't children. don't listen to that, folks, sorry. Uh, it's usually sedges have edges, reeds are round, and grasses have capes all the way to the ground. Well, that, that works too, I guess. Because kids like superhero capes, you know. Fragmites makes good arrow shafts, your yeah. husband says. Yeah. I did not know that, but I totally see it now. I can see it. That uh, cattails do as well. Is your, is, is, how do you say his name? Goyakle. Goyakle. Is he, G. It, G. is he, is he, um, does he know a lot about natural plants and their uses? Uh, some. I know he's done a lot of, uh, And would he like to come out to my class to teach? Skills? to oh, teach probably. about native plants and native american ways probably oh that would be wonderful we had a, a lenape elder uh come out and talk to my class oh, about Mark? no um oh what's his name because we're friends with uh the nanakoke tribe from down south jersey um his name is reverend oh i can't remember reverend somebody <laughs> Elizabeth says, that's how we taught it to elementary age kids back at Helmer Nature Center in upstate New York. The kids loved it, and it was easy to remember. Yeah. Yeah, my education was a little bit more rough around the edges. I did Norwood, that. Reverend uh, uh, Norwood. Okay. The name yeah. is Norwood. He's Whoa. A... Whoa. What? <laughs> ah! That's a lot of caterpillars. <laughs> Ew. Gross. Hey, bugs are awesome. No, bugs are gross. Okay, wait, no, I like bugs. What? Are, what actually, at the end of this month, we're doing a bug watch with my friend Jamie. All right. So, bugs what? What, what? What is this? What do we got? Uh, that is an excellent question. Red, I'm really good red with... thing, red, red-headed butt things. They're red. Uh, they got are the butts red. red. Oh yeah, the butts the, are the red. The butts too. are red. We got yellow spotted red-headed butt things. Well, let's see if the app can tell us because I really like using technology to help inform holes in my knowledge. No, I don't do that. <laughs> Just I kidding. I, I, I exclusively do that. Let's see. Where are these things? There we go. It is an azalea caterpillar moth. An azalea caterpillar moth. Hmm. You just got a text message saying something from your... Uh, every... Oh, whatever. Your mom. Yeah, she'll be fine. Okay. But, yeah. So, this is an azalea caterpillar moth. How oh, interesting. I wonder what an azalea caterpillar... There are... There's like... <sighs> there's at least ten of them all clustered together. They do that because they love each other. I'm actually surprised that they do that. I would think it would be just a... Uh, you know, too much competition for food. They have stripped the leaves off of this thing. You can see they've done it on this one too. A couple of them. Okay, bye friends. You guys are gross. <laughs> oh, sorry guys. G says he can help me with desert plants, but not out here. Maybe with weaponry. I'll take weaponry. I like weaponry. Weaponry and uh... I'm more interested in 
teaching students that <laughs> Native Americans knew everything that we know thousands of years before we came here, and we, we really, to them. we really need to listen to them to learn more. <laughs> That's a, it's a constant thing in my, um, my lessons is that ecology is the science of describing things that Native Americans knew for thousands of years. <laughs> uh, one thing that I talk about with my students is the, the, um, uh, the three sisters method of planting where you, oh, yeah. you, you plant corn, squash, and, uh, what is it? Beans, beans. Yep. all next to each other. And they grow better than if they were in mixture. And we, we in ecology call that, uh, uh, mixture versus monoculture, um, okay. planting. A bit of symbiosis in there. You know, that's the, the whole reason why mixture works is because yeah. of symbiosis. People are saying that the video is pixelated. Guys, I'm sorry. That's going to have to do with the connection. We're just at the mercy. Bear with us. Fleabane. You can make tea from that. I've heard of that. Yeah. What, what is what is fleabane? This fleabane? flower? Yep. Uh, so it's in the aster family because you got all these little individual petals here. But fleabane, you can make tea from. Do you make tea from the from the from the flowers? I yeah, I've done it from the flowers. Okay. If you find tea berry, you can also make tea from tea berry. It's not actually tea. It is not. And it's Dirk McGurk says polycultures and permacultures. Oh, Dirk McGurk. <laughs> <laughs> tea berry is also, Dirk, tea berry is also called wintergreen, and it's not even a mint. <laughs> wintergreen is considered a mint flavor, but it's not in the mint family. Now, wintergreens are the little red berries yeah. that you got. Yep. All right, you're going to have to hold this phone for a little bit while I grab some water. Absolutely. I am dying of thirst. Oh. That is why, uh, <laughs> that's why I went with the camelback. Yeah, my back's going to be sweaty, but at least I can drink as we go. See this, Simba? <laughs> All this you will own. So this was our airstrip uh, when the farm did. Oh, cool. Before you knew that. It wasn't a good thing to do consistently for the ecosystem. Yeah, so you can always tell the shallowest parts of our wetlands because they are just covered in lilies. You want to tap some of your trees for syrup? I know. We're doing it. We Someone got a grant. was doing it. Yeah, we got a grant to uh, study maple, red maple tapping. And what's that, you guys? Way. That's Probably. awesome. Probably. Because I, I actually just read something we'll about that taps. last week. We'll give you the tap. Anybody that's listening, anybody that watches this video, <laughs> I'll put a shout out to you. If you own some forested property that has red maples in it, we will give you tapping equipment. I would love to throw some taps out here. We will give you tapping equipment. You only have to collect the syrup, split sap, and process it. You can you can keep all of the syrup. All we want to do is be able to come onto your property and take some measurements of the soil. But yeah, you can tap red maple trees for the sap. It's delicious. Elizabeth Hensel, if you are still on here and watching, I know your dad has a maple farm. Maybe you have Anywhere some... in South Jersey. Anywhere in South well, Jersey. Her dad's maple farm is up in upstate New York. But if you have any maple trees on your property... You can start tapping your own trees. That would be really cool. Yep. Let's see. Ah, somebody laid down some fresh sand. This is not native sand. That was sand that was brought in. Fun fact, when you walk around the Pine Barrens enough, you can tell native sand from not native sand. It looks completely different. Is this what we would call invasive sand? I would assume. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this has many more small rocks in it where our natural sands are much more silica based, much finer. If you've ever heard of sugar sand, it's a very fine, very loose sand. You can sink into it. It is very hard to walk through. Is this sugar sand? This is not. Well, this is very hard to walk through and I'm struggling. I'm wearing heavy denim and a cotton oh. shirt, folks. Yeah, why'd you wear denim? Because I'm stupid. <laughs> that's a mushroom. That is a mushroom. I you want to get your thing out? I think that's a turkey tail. 
<laughs> Zach says, I tap that. <laughs> <laughs> tap the pitch pine so we can make glue. No, thank you. <laughs> well, you can actually make I glue I tap from it. that. Did you know you can make glue from the sap of the pitch pine tree? It is called pitch glue. Huh. Uh, no, I did not know that. It is uh, the sap of the pitch pine is extremely sticky. Uh, you collect some of it, boil out the impurities, and mix it with a little bit of charcoal, uh, some, if you are really going primitive, some like rabbit or deer poop for the grass content as a binder. And yeah, you make glue. Huh. I did not know that. All right. Elizabeth says, yes, I'm here. My dad mostly has sugar maples and in western New York. Yeah, that makes sense because that's where sugar maples are. Oh, it's are. a reishi mushroom. A reishi? It is a golden reishi. That I is have... edible, isn't it? It is edible. Oh. This is harvestable. That is a harvestable mushroom, folks. A golden reishi. I like it. Excellent. Yeah, Elizabeth, if you have red maples at work, I don't know where work is, but uh, if yeah, if you want to, if 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 they'll allow you to tap it and collect the sap, um, let us know. Shoot, shoot us a message. Uh, she's a professional falconer. A professional falconer? That's the most amazing job I can think of. <laughs> that's that's literally like the most amazing job I can think of. It takes a lot of work. It does. It does take a lot of work. Any other things you'd like to know about the pine? I want to make glue. Got some there you go. There's some more red maples. You can tap those. Oh yeah, those are a good size yeah, too. Yeah, plenty of red maples. We got so much pepper Let's tap bush. some red maples around here. Look at all our pepper bush coming in. Oh yeah, I'm so bad with remembering plant species of the like the the when they're small. Right. I know holly. I got holly. I've been working here now for four years. I've gotten pretty good with our common plants. Some of our less common plants, I'm still working on. Ooh. And fungus. I am not good at fungus. G says, I can show you how to make pitch glue if you want. That would be fantastic. That would be great, actually. So, G, you're going to have to, we're going to have to get in contact because I'm doing all virtual classes this semester because, you know, pandemic. Yep. And um, if you and I can, like, get together to do a virtual live, live stream of, of glue making, that would be fantastic. And I can invite the public. Do you need a snack? No, those don't look right. Oh, the bottom one looks right. It's okay. Taking off my mask right now. Oof. Once the mask is on and you're sweating through it, it's like glued to your face. You kind of get used to it. It's almost like, uh, I know you've done field work. I've done field work. When you're doing field work and it's either downpouring rain or... It's my pinky has sweat on it right now. A <laughs> hundred or it's 100 degrees out, and you're out and you're doing it. You're like, whatever, I can deal with it. The second you're somewhere warm and dry or nice and cool, you're like, why did I put myself through this? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to find some of our uh, carnivorous plants, because we have three types of sundew. We have purple pitcher plants, and we do have um, bladder warts. It's just finding them underneath, well, all, underneath the of all this and then of course you have sundews yes sundews sundews are great got your spatulas and your thread leaves and your round leaves got some little club bosses down there if we're lucky we'll see a deer but we're being a little loud we're at the one hour mark. I don't know how long you want to go. Oh, I don't know. We can probably go until battery dies or loop around. Always carry extra masks, mostly cotton. <laughs> Susan. Thanks, Mom. My mom's a nurse. Oh, no. <laughs> this mask that I'm wearing on my face right now is a neck gaiter. This is not like the best type of mask, but I can't, I can't do anything else in the field. 
It's going to kill me. I'm out of shape. Look at those beautiful pink ones. Oh, man. Those are the prettiest flowers ever. Fragrant pond lilies. We got some blood moss. That's boring. <laughs> Mosses are cool. Uh, hey. Club moss. Right. Well, that's a baby that's cedar baby tree. That's <laughs> baby cedar. That club moss is down there. Yeah, it's these guys. Yeah, a little baby maple. Look at that little one coming Here, in. Hold the phone. I'm going to see if I can get some, some bladder wart. Yeah, see if you can find some underneath there. I this think... is aquatic ecology at work. I know there's pond weed in there. You can see that. Hi. <laughs> that greenery floating on... It is greenery floating on water, Lucy. This Ew. is all pond weed. A lot of muck. Muck is the technical term for all the gross decaying plant matter. That is muck. No. Yeah, this is just... Yeah, it looks like, like pond weed. weed. No, no bladders. Ugh. Gross. I'm going to hold on to this for a bit until your hand dries off. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what's... I don't know what's worse, aquatic science or animal science when it comes to gross stuff. I uh, got some more blueberries. Oh, that's a good bush, actually. There's a good amount of berries on this blueberry plant. Yeah, fun fact about walking through here. If you can recognize a blueberry plant, you can pick the blueberries and eat them. I'm doing it. I'm not going to stop you. Oh, we got some more wine berries. So the oh, wine berries taste like. Oh, there's a good one right there. You see how nice and dark it is? All right, so is it going to taste like a blackberry? Ah, uh, a little bit. Oh, it's sour. Oh, it's sour. Welcome. Oh, God, it's sour. Welcome to the Pine Barrens, where oh, everything God. is sour because Why it grows. Why do I keep putting things in my mouth? <laughs> in acidic soil. Because science. Oh. You put things in your mouth for science. Oh, hey, carrots. What? Oh, uh, there's some wild carrot growing. Oh. Hey, right there. That's carrot. Looks like carrot greens. Can we pull it up and see a carrot? Um, you might. Sounds if you ever see, it's known as Queen's, Queen Anne's Lace. It's a big ball of a flower. That's not a carrot. <laughs> usually if you find the ones that have flowered, you'll usually see any wild sage? Um, I don't know. I have not seen any. Uh, Lucy is asking if the park is open for exploration. Yes. The grounds of Whitesbog are open from sunup until sundown, 365 days a week. Ooh, there are a lot of deer out here. I'm seeing tons of footprints. There are probably, there probably are tons of critters in that pond. Absolutely. Uh, definitely some dragonfly and damselfly larvae. Huh, that leads to people. So, what is this? Uh, that does look like a blueberry, but I don't see any berries. It was probably these maples. Blueberries like some. Until you burn the forest. And then they like to grow in the nice open burned areas. Opportunistic. They're very opportunistic. So are your wine berries. That blueberry are the only botanical berry to also be an edible berry. Or like a culinary berry. Raspberries are not technically a berry botanically. Uh, neither are blackberries. Bananas. They are a berry. Yeah, they're a berry. Back to part. Uh, eggplants are a berry. And avocados are a weird spot because some are a berry. And some people call them a stone fruit. Oh, we are losing our signal. Probably because we're... What? Ever had blueberry wine? Uh, I've yeah. had blueberry meat. 
So we came back just... Ooh, did you hear that green frog? That was a loud one. That was me. Was it? We no. came back uh -huh. just in time to find a very, very... Blueberries. Good blueberry bush. Look at all those blueberries! Alright, so we seem to be losing our signal a bit more, and also... I know Aaron and I were starting to lose our... How big this caterpillar is? So it's that azalea caterpillar, but look yeah. how big that one is! Like, Look at his cute little legs gripping the thing. Let's see if we can focus on him. Come on, phone! Focus! Not on the leaves in the background, the leaves in the... There we go! Cute little face! All right. Round. There we go. Hi. Oh, sorry. I was eating blueberries. Yeah. Well, you're back for me, so yeah, we're okay. Uh, so, yes, yeah, thank you for joining us. Uh, join us again next week. In <laughs> we're going to be in North Jersey Park. Yeah. State Park, which is a completely different environment from the Pine. I have never been to Ringwood State Park. You have? Yep, once before. Excellent. It's probably going to do a little more talking about North.